Okay, so on this semester, online only. However, for the fall, that means September, you guys will be go back to the lab. Okay. Also, you have to look into our web to see the schedule. Today, you'll be with me. Uh, tomorrow, you will be on the different Zoom for the lab instructor who will help you to understand how do we do in the lab. And Wednesday, you go back with me. Okay, and the Thursday, you will be on the lab. That's for this week. Okay, so everyone wants to be a technician. However, technician really need you, your guy to study. Okay, you get the handout, try to read it over and over. Anything you not understand, okay? Then you can ask the question. You can see my Zoom. If you want to get Zoom at a different time to ask any question, just text to me, okay? I will be with you, try to help you to understand it. Okay, the fourth one. For any semester, we already start with a DC. Okay, DC circuitry. For any handout for the take one for this summer, if you already on take two, you don't have to do anything. If you want to do it, it's better. Or you already know, get through this. DC circuitry, then okay. I don't ask you to upload your assignment. Okay? So now we start with the first thing. You can see you get a DRI current DC and alternating. Cora, that will be AC. Try to see what the difference. I try to see how come I can not using my pen. Hmm. Something much wrong with the iPad today. Okay, the problem may be out almost our battery. That's what I don't know. Okay, so I go back. Hmm. Yeah, just a minute.
Okay, so we're talking about direct current. This is a DC. Like, you know, your car battery, you get 12 volt. Mr. Fam, you're sharing the wrong screen. Oh, the wrong one? Okay, let me stop there here, I share again. Is it right? Uh, oh. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Perfect. The thing I took in the monitor yesterday. Okay. So, there's a DC direct current. That's very, that's a cost. Maybe right? we display the 12 volt, that means only 12 volt. 5 volt, that means only 5. Okay. They cannot vary with the time. However, the other one I see alternating current. You see this signal here, just like the sideways. Okay, basically you can get a voltage here and the voltage here and they keep moving. They vary with the time. So that's why we go AC. Okay, yeah. If you get a question, go ahead and ask. Um, can, can you give us an example of a DC current? Like what kind of, uh, what kind of electronic devices are a DC current? Okay, right now I'm talking about DC. That means the certain voltage or the certain current, like the constant value. Five volt, take the five volt, no matter what the time, can be 5 milliamp or 5 amp, same thing. It's just a constant value. Doesn't matter for the time. Very, however, the AC, the signal will be very with the time. That's what they call alternating color. And now you can, where you can get it. Your car battery, 12 volt, get the 12 volt all the time. However, this signal here coming out from your outlet. Okay, coming out from your outlet. And you can see they will be a sideway. And they keep running over and over. They're changing with the time. Okay, that will be the AC. So, Mr. Pham, the, so the, the DC source could be a car battery or a double A battery or a triple A battery right. or any, any, any battery that right. provides a constant voltage. Right, any voltage constant. That will be DC. Okay. And now for the AC signal. When you're looking into this signal here, the name will be the side way. That is the side way. Okay. And the voltage from zero up to the top here, they call a VP. And that equals 5 volt. Okay, and then they put it from zero down to the bottom here. Also we pick and the value will be the same five volt. Okay, and the voltage from the top to the bottom here, that's what they call V pick to pick. They will be a 10 volt absolute value. Okay, so in here, I already telling you, okay? Time domain, time limit vary with the time. V peak equal five volt, and V peak to peak 
equal to time of repeat, equal 10 volt. And also they say V uh, I am at, that's what they call F like they wanted. They will be equal to 0 0.707 time repeat and you get 3.535 volt, okay? And period, period. That means from where you stuck here, okay? And now you go up to this point, you stuck again. That means complete one cycle. And that's what they call a period, okay? In second, F frequency, okay? Frequency and the period, you get a formula. T equal one over F or F equal one over T. That means if you get the period, you're able to calculate the frequency. Or if you get the frequency, you're able to calculate the period, okay? And here they say one complete occurrence of a repeating way, periodic signal, set at one positive and one negative alternation of a side wave. That will be defined for cycle. Frequency, the number of cycle of a signal that occur in one second. And the period, the time distance between two similar points on a period, periodic way. That's just a basic definition for cycle for frequency or for period. It's just the formula, okay? Don't ask me why. That the, you must be following. Try to make sure every time I get a five way, you can tell me if I want to be big or I want to be big to big or I want to be I am at effective voltage, okay? When we go to the AC, we'll be more detailed, okay? And how we can get the period or the frequency. Okay, any uh, question on this thing? I suppose you know nothing about electronics. So that's why we have to go from the basic. Someone already know. Okay, however, a lot of people still don't understand what's going on in learning electronic. Okay? I've got a question, Professor. What? So, so on the effective voltage, there is like 0707 multiplied the peak voltage. How about this, uh, this value, like the 0707? Is it like a standard value or, or should we know something about this? That's a VIMF value. Okay, now what VIMF value? Effective mm -hmm. value. That means you get a home sideway here when you're using for your circuitry. You're not using everything here. You're just using what they call a VIMF. I telling you, outlet of your at your house. What the voltage on your outlet? You know what is your voltage of the outlet in your house? How many volt? One ten. One hundred twenty. Typically one hundred ten. One ten or one twenty uh, RMS. That yeah. hundred. And 20 volt. That's yeah, but maybe no. Okay, but my thought. So maybe I I said the wrong question. I know then uh, D peak is like the final voltage. It's the voltage between positive voltage and negative voltage. Okay, so the value for to calculate the RMS 
there is like an equal, and then there is a value, 0707. It's like some kind of resistance, like this value, the 0707. Wow, that's a like, problem. It's, that's yeah, a, Mr. But, but I mean, where, where, where did you get this value, like 0707? He's just using it as an example for the formula. It's not a no. It's it actually specific. is. It's not. It's not an example. It's an actual definite it's value. Like, it it turns out that it. RMS RMS stands for root mean square. So if you take the like, if you look at the average value of a sine wave, it's zero because it spends half its time positive and half its time negative, but it does deliver energy. And so the effective energy is the RMS value. So it's the root mean square. So you take um, the, the square of the value, which makes it all positive, right? And then you take the, uh, uh, the average of that and then the square root of that to undo the square you did. So it's a definite value. It's exactly 0 0.707 times the peak. Hey, Richard. Um you also say that it's like the square root of two divided by two. Well, that's what it turns out to be, yeah, mathematically. There's a, there's a pretty good in 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 the in the references on the on the main page. There's a pretty good reference that explains this. So you should go dive into that if you don't understand the the, the underlying mathematics. Okay, but it's just it's just a way of of. Uh, determining the effective uh, ability to deliver energy um, that's equivalent, like the, like the equivalent DC voltage that would deliver the same amount of energy. That's the simplest way of looking at it, I think. Okay, so at the top and bottom of the sine wave, that's represented as five. Is this, uh, uh, like you're saying, the effective voltage? Does that work in relation to the volt peak? Because the, it's pointing to a, an area below the top of the peak that hits five volts on the screen, where it says volt peak, or is that just showing well, that the, the, the five? five the five volts is just an example. If it's ten volts, the RMS would be 0 0.707 times ten. Whatever, it's just 0 0.707 times the peak voltage. Okay. That's, you got to just like drive that into your head and just memorize that if you don't want to go through the, you know, kind of complicated math. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So basically, you just get the formula. If you want the IMF, then you have to using 0 0.707 times VP. And VP will be vary depending on the signal. This just an example will be 5 volts. They can get a big uh, model, doesn't matter. Got it. Now, next one common power of 10. Okay. Basically, you're looking here, you get a 1 million. They will be equal to 10 power of 6 or 10 power of 5, 10 power of 4, 10 of 3, power of 2, power of 1, power of 0. 10 power of 0 equal 1. Any number with power 0 equal to 1. And also, if you get a 0, 0, 0 whatever year, they will be 10 minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, and so on. OK? You handle with the next number in electronic system, they're using power of 10 notation. The number 10 equal the base, and its power equal exponent. Like you get 247,000, that's a too big number. So they want to change it into power of 10. Then the fourth thing, the first number, they give me 0, 1 to 10. So I pick number 2, OK? 2.7. And you have to time to whatever power of 10 to make it up. So you can see right here, you get a 2.47. And 
and now you can get one, two, three, four, five. So that's why you multiply by 10 power of five. Okay, so this number and this number, the same. Only this one, they is in the power of 10. And you understand what they say, okay? To handle with a large number in electronic system, that's why they want using power of 10. This is just like, you know, a formula you have to know for x one, like 10 power of two, you know that equal 100, or 10 power of three equal 1,000, and so on. Okay, any question? Okay, now you see another example here. 0 0.00369. So you wonder, number will be 3.69. Okay, 3.69. Okay, and now you can see how many number equivalent to that the rate of the number. So three right here, okay, you can get how many? Take out right here. At the point, at this point, go to the left, you get one, two, three. So that's why you have to 10, time to 10 minus three, okay? So this is one for positive, and this will be one for uh, power negative. So if I given you any number, you're able to convert it into the engineering notation. Okay, if you get a question, just stop me. Okay, let me know. Okay, multiplication and division using power of 10. Okay. If you get 1.2 times 10 power 3, times to 1.5, 10 power 4. What you can do, just multiply 1.2 to 1.5, okay? And the power will be add them up. So the answer will be 1.8 times 10 to power 7. And now for division, okay, you divide 4.5 times 10 power 2, okay, to 3 times 10 power negative 2. 14 divide number, 4.5 divide 3, you get 1.5. And the power, okay, you take the 2 power of 2, minus two minus two. So you can get 1.5 times 10 to power four. We're not going to too much in the math, but the basic thing here, you have to know, okay? The thing is, we're using a lot in the program. Okay, now, it's a converting following number to power of 10 notation, okay? Then perform the operation indicator. So you get number A, 276 times 0 0.009. Okay, go ahead and tell me what answer you get. Okay, on the number A, I think the answer will be 28. Is it right or wrong?
It's 2.48, 2.48. Two point four eight four. Yeah, it's two point four eight plus decimals. It will be a uh, two point four eight. Two point four eight four. Two point four eight four. So that's the wrong answer, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Two point four eight four. Okay, how about next one? Ninety eight thousand two hundred divided twenty. The answer is correct. Is it the answer will be four point ninety one times ten power three? Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, addition and subtraction. Okay, adding 3.25, okay, times 10 power two, and five times 10 power three. Okay. They using 10 pop two representation and they using 10 pop three representation. Okay, you can see five times 10 pop three. Okay, then you get a 50 times 10 pop two. Okay, the thing is. They want to make the same power. So they want it uh, using power of two, okay? So now you can get 3.25 times 10 power of two, adding to 50 times 10 power of two, okay? So basically you just adding the number, okay? 3.25 adding to 50 you get 53.25 and multiply by power of two. Okay. Anyway, when you want to add a number, okay, with the power, make sure you get that same power, okay? No matter same power of two or same power of three, then you can add it. Okay, and the power not changing. Uh, next one, they want power uh, using 10 power of three. So now 3.25, okay, times 10 power of two. Okay, you want to go up to power of three. Then that means you divide that number by 10. So that's why you can get 0 0.325 time power of three. Okay, then the same power of three, you add them up and the powers will be power of three. Okay, so now, summary for the adding with the power, you have to make the power will be the same, okay? If you want this five times 10 power of three to go in down to power of two, that means five have to multiply by 10. That's why you get 50, okay, times power of two. And now if you want to go using power of three, and right now you get on this one power of two, you want to go up, 10 power of three. That means you have to take this number divide to 10, okay? That's how to add it, okay? Either addition or uh, in here, or subtraction. 
we do in the same way. Okay, and the question. Okay, power. Raising a number to a power in form of multiplication or division if the exponent is negative. For example, if you get two times 10 power of three and square, okay, what happened? First thing you square number two. That means two times two, you get four, okay? And the power here will be Let's see, uh, two times 10 power of three, and you get the square. That means you get two times 10 power of three. So basically, you can using get easier, okay? Square two, you get four. Power of two, that means power of six, two times three. Power of six. The answer will be four times ten power of six. In general, this is just a formula. Okay. You can follow that formula to do. Integer fractional power represent root. If you get four to the power one over two, that means you square root of four. Okay, you want six square root of four, you get two. Okay, and if you get what, 27, okay, you get one over three. Okay, then you can get a, take a root of three, you get three. Now, let's see what they want here. They want a 250 power of three. Okay. Okay, two power, let's see. So you can get 2.5 times power of two. Okay. That means you get 2.5 power of 3 times 10 power of 2 of 3. And what you get? 15.625 power of 6. Hmm. Can you follow that one? Let's say 250. And that will be power three. Is correct. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's fifteen million six hundred twenty-five thousand. So yeah, but it is better to be one point five six two five. Yeah, best practice for scientific. The best best practice for scientific notation is to have one integer number, and the rest be decimals. So the best answer for A, even though. 15.625 is times 10 to the 6 is correct. It would be better to write it as 1.5625 times 10 to right, the 7. 10, 10 power 7, yeah. Yes, it's better. Best, best practice. Yeah. Except, OK, that's scientific. But in engineering, uh, we like uh, powers of 3, right? We like. Like 10 to the 6 would be, if this was frequency, it would be 
megahertz. Or if it was resistance, it would be megohms. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. Right? I got so it. Engi yes, engineering is yes. a little different. You want oh, powers okay. of three, like, like it, you know. Um, Kilo, mega. Like yeah. Kilo and milli, mega okay. and micro. I got it. That, that, okay. Yeah, that's what they want to come up with a certain uh, power. Okay. Like they want to power up six. Uh, power of three. Okay. So this is basically coming uh, from the uh, textbook. I, I given you that one zero point zero fifty six and power of two. So basically, what the inside you already converting to the engineering notation. That means 5.6, okay? You right here, 5.6, you get one, two, three, so power minus three. So when you take that out, take the square root out, okay? 10 will be power of the minus six. That means minus three times two, you get the minus six. And 5.6, okay, that will be equal, same thing. You square root, you take a square 5.6, okay, that one you get this number, okay. And also the same thing in here, 141 minus 2, so they want minus 4, okay. So you change that 141, to any nearing your notation. So you get 1.42, okay? One right here. For two, you get two number. So power of two, okay? Then now you can take 1.41, okay, square root that, okay? And also power two times two, you get a minus four, okay? So basically, if you get your calculator, you can take the, that number, they supposed to be equal to 3.9515. Okay, but we're not concentrating on this too much detail, okay, to convert it. Okay, next one will be en engineering prefix. So you know they get a tera, giga, mega, kilo, milli, micro, nano. Mr. Pham, where your your uh, PowerPoint is cut off. Could you shrink the screen okay. a little bit? Maybe a control. Okay, thank you. That's okay, thank right? Perfect, thank you. Okay, basically. Uh, 10 power 12, they call a Terra, a symbol capital T, power 9, Giga, capital Z. That's why you all go to buy the computer, they can ask you how much memory you want. You can say 4 gigabyte, okay? That means Giga will be equivalent to 10 power 9, okay? And by mean eight bit, they can multiply to see how many bit total. Omega 10 power six, okay, kilo power three, milli power minus three, and micro minus six, nano minus nine, and pico will be minus 12. So we are on the time will be hit into this thing here. Like I can say, uh, three kilo ampere, okay? Or uh, two uh, micro ampere. Then you have to know, they have to multiply with what number here, okay? Now they say converting zero one mega volt to kilo volt. Okay, what you get?
mega to kilo. So mega bigger than the kilo. Mega 10 power of six. Okay. And kilo will be power of three. So if you want to convert it from 0 0.1 mega volt to kilo volt, then basically you take 0 0.1 times 10 power of three. Right? Yes. That is the answer. So basically you can say equal 0 0.1 time 10, okay, power of three, okay? So basically equal hundred, right? Power six point one times ten power uh, six mega is ten power six, yeah. Yes, correct. Okay, you get zero point one mega volt. They want to know how many in kilo volt. So basically, kilo and the mega different will be power of three. Mega higher than the kilo, 1,000. So if you want it to take 0 0.1 times 1,000. Yeah. So that's why you get 100 kilovolt. OK. The answer is correct, yeah. So Mike, I have a question. So you got to, I'm doing this for the first time. I guess it's important to pay attention to whether it's a capitalized or a lowercase m. The capitalized one indicates mega, the lowercase one indicates millivolt, it sounds like. Is that correct? Yeah, try now, okay? Normally, when we go into the other thing and capital using for DC, okay, lowercase using for AC, okay? However, right now we in the DC, so we don't care. When we combine AC and DC, then we have to pay attention, okay? Capital letter using for DC. Lowercase letter using for AC. In, I, you know, I think that's that could be confusing, Mr. Fan, because uh, we, we apply the uppercase and lowercase for, for DC and AC values when we're talking about maybe transistors, but just for the basic math, it uh, doesn't matter whether it's AC or DC. Exactly. We talk, mega, megavolts is, it has the power of six and millivolts has the power of minus uh, three, right? So look at it, when we look at this is like a, a megavolt equals a thousand kilovolts, right? Because between a thousand and a million, it's it's 10 to the three, it's a thousand multiplier. So if, if one megavolt equals a thousand kilovolts, then 0.1 megavolt must equal a hundred kilovolts. Doesn't really matter if it's AC or DC. Okay. I think that's a- Yeah, they're talking about a map. Okay, so I just telling you, if you converting a 0 0.1 mega volt to the kilo, the difference between mega and kilo will be a thousand. So you can take 0 0.1 times 10 power of three being a thousand, you get a hundred kilovolt. And now they say it's Pratt. Hey, Mr. Pham, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Um, I noticed like a lot of times, say like if we were talking about ohms, we would say um, one meg ohm, and then we would use a big M to say one meg ohm. But if we were saying uh, four millivolts, then we would use like a little M 
for the, I mean, millivolts or milliamps. So, but as you were saying, that's mostly in DC, correct? I don't know if that was what Richard was referring to. No, that's okay. You can see in here. Capital for TGM. That's for Terra Giga Mega. And lower K for the rest. Okay? Only thing is, you know, they say uh, 0.5 Mega. If you put a small lower yeah, I get you. I get you. I'm just trying to clarify. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, now, 10 times 10 power 4 volt is an extract in engineering notation. So, what do you think they equal? One hundred kilowatts. Okay, engineering notation. That is scientific notation. One point something, or zero point. If they want the normally one point zero, that means the first number will be one or less than ten. Then you can time for the power, 10 to what power? Five. Okay, so you get a four here. Now you're going down 10 here. You divide it to 10. That means you can get up to one more, okay, power. And on the second one here, Mr. Pham, yeah. they're asking they're asking not for scientific notation, but for engineering notation. So I think the proper answer should be uh, one hundred kilowatt. One hundred uh, yeah, one hundred kilovolts. Or you could go the other way by three, but it's so it should be one one hundred times ten to the three, which is 100 kilovolts as I don't know who was speaking. So I think I think the difference you have to differentiate between scientific notation okay which you've shown there which is 1.0 okay. and engineering notation which uses engineering units. Okay. So I think engineering okay so 10 they can be uh, uh let's see 1. 100 times 10 to the 3 100, okay, you can turn 10 to the power. Three. Three. Now, what I want to do to make sure you understand, they want that power have to be matching to whatever power here. Okay? If you don't want three, you can go to Six, okay, that's okay, but they must be in this power here. So now on 0 0.1 times 10 to the power of three. You can see that, that already, power of three, okay? Yes. So it's 0 0.1 kilowatts. Yes. Okay, so what, so then it so will be point one, 10 power of three, what? Okay, right here. Maybe be kilowatt, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. Point one, okay. Oh. At the bottom line. Yeah. 0 0.1, okay, kilowatt. Kilowatt. Okay, and on this one, two second. Then you want to power up six. Okay, if you want power up six, that means 250 will be go to 2500 times 10 power up six. 
Michael Sakin. A Sakin, okay? He got six. Yeah, we don't care that much. Now, on that one here. No, Mr. Fem, you said microsecond. 10 to the power 6 is not a micro. That's a second. But if but you, you said micro, you have to take out the minus 6. But the, can you go back again? It's 2500 zero, zero, 10 to the power 6. So yeah, what notation we are going to use here is mega. I'm talking about letter C. Okay, now equal. Now I want to change that to power of C. So that yeah, that is two five zero. That is two five zero zero times ten to the power six. Zero zero, right? Time. Times ten to ten to the power six. Ten power of six. And then same thing we can write as two five zero zero mega. Uh, Mega seconds or capital MS. Okay, they will be this. You can say 2500 mega. Yeah, mega seconds. Yeah. Okay, now you can see on this thing here. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, you can see you got car battery here. That is uh, your headlight. Okay, when you turn it on, the current will be flowing. Okay, and turn on the light. And the current will be returned to the negative. Okay, so how come we get the current, okay? The current basically that the thing, the electron will be moving. However, the electron will be moving from the negative to the positive, okay? That they're talking about the electron current. And for conventional current we're using, will be on a time, current flowing from positive to the negative. Okay, inside the laminar, that's just a resistor. Resistor inside here, when you turn it on, okay? So the power here gives we turn it in, turn out to be, uh, uh, you know, what the, uh, you can get, uh, you can touch in the outside here, they will be hot, okay? So if somehow strong with the, the light, when you turn it on, they not on. That means something broken in here. They open. So the current cannot flowing through the open circuit. So that's why. Okay. The thing is when they turn it on, electrical converting into the heat. Okay. So that's why if you touch outside, they will be hot. Okay. Now. They're talking about resistance. Resistance is the opposition to the electric flow. A component manufactured to have a resistance is called a resistor. Conductor like copper have a little resistance. Now you see this is a symbol for the resistor, okay? On the schematic circuitry, they're using this symbol. The letter symbol is R. Unit of the resistance is the ohm. Okay, they can using this symbol here. Okay, and you understand they can be kilo ohm. 
they can be mega ohm. Okay, kilo ohm equal a thousand ohm. Okay, that's what we just learned. So every time you're looking into this simple here, you understand that is the resistor. Okay, and they normally use the simple R, R1, R2, R3, for example. And the unit, they will be in O. Okay, and this symbol they can use it. So basically, resistance that will be opposite to the current flow. Big resistance, less current. Okay. And now that just given you a symbol for that resistance. Okay. Color code, they can get a color here. Okay. Just for your reference. <laughs> also, that is just a symbol. You're looking into that one, you know that is a resistor. Okay. And resistor, they can be two watt or one watt, half watt, depending on the size of the resistor. Okay. Bigger, more what? Okay, smaller, they will be going down. Also, they did a different type of the resistor. They call a power resistor, they will be look like. Okay. And, and now, this is one of power resistors. Is that the uh, for uh, heat reduction or something like that? Yet sometimes they using in the power supply or in something circuitry they need more power. But what I'm saying is, like sometimes you get a situation where a device will start to get hot, and and those the materials that that's made from will absorb the heat more or what? No, I didn't see. Okay, if something okay. high, they get a, a heat really a problem they need to put up, you know, something to take care of that. Another way, you can get resistor like the IC here. They get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means inside, they can get seven to eight resistor. They put in this IC here. The reason they, they want to say the room when they design the circuitry. If you put a six, eight resistor inside, that's a lot of space. So that's why they put inside one I see like this one. Hey, Joseph, uh, to answer your question about power resistors, they're just designed to dissipate more power. And many power resistors have uh, uh, means for, for tying them down to heat sinks uh, to, to um, root the, the, the heat away so the resistor doesn't overheat. That's basically what the idea of a power resistor. Yeah, if they're using the power resistor for the circuitry with the high power, then if you're using the normally resistor, you get a problem. It will be cooking. So Richard, when you said dissipate power, you meant it, it uh, reduces the heat, correct? Well, when a, when a resistor resists current, it it uh, there's power, right? Uh, I squared R or V squared over R. That's the amount of power that's amount of electrical energy that's being converted to heat, and the heat has to go somewhere. If it's right. if it right if it doesn't, has nowhere to go, it, it builds up, and if the resistor doesn't have enough volume or the ability to radiate the heat or, or to conduct the heat away, the resistor can burn up, right? That's why resistors have power ratings. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, now we're talking about resistor color. So basically inside the, the, the resistor, you get the color code here. Okay, that's what they call a general purpose. They get one, 
two, three, four bands. The fourth one, they go up. Fourth significant digit. Second one will be second digit. Third one will be multiply. And the last one, tolerant. Okay, four bands. And now if you go to the precision register, they get five bands. So the first one, okay, will be first digit, second digit, third digit, and you can get the multiplier and tolerance, okay? That means when you look into the register, you see the color code, you're able to calculate the value of that register. So normally that assembler, they have to learn it. A technician, and we don't care. You know it, that better. Okay, otherwise, we don't need that. The thing is, if you want the value of register, you will be using the meter, okay, to measure. That's telling you exactly the value, okay? And if you base on the color code, however, if inside register they open and they not correct the answer, okay? So if they asking you, given you the register, they asking you what is the value then the answer will be, if you want me to talking about the color code, then I can tell you. However, exact value will be using the meter to measure, okay? And this is the table for precision register color code. That means black, uh, brown, first digit one, second digit one, and third digit will be a one. That means you multiply by 10 power of one. Okay, the next one, number two, you multiply by 10 power of two. That means 22 times that one. Okay, and that will be telling you what is the value. Okay and the tolerance, okay? If you hear brown, plus minus 1%, or plus minus 2%, or so on, okay? When we're talking more about tolerance, we explain to you, okay? And precision, the same thing, different value, same way. Now, if I get this register here, and I want to know the value. The first one will be brown, okay? Next one, the white, the gray. Next one, orange. And the next one will be gold, okay? So on this one, we get a one, two, three, four, five. We ignore that five here. We try to show you how to get the value here. Okay, let's see, they gave them you answer or not. Okay, here they say, we see that the data will have value 18 times 10 power three. How come we get 18? Now you go to the table, brown first digit, gray second digit, Wow, value one, okay? And the gray value number eight. You see that? That means one eight, okay? And always here, multiply by three, okay? That's why they given you one eight times 10 power three, okay? and plus a minus 10 per 5 percent goal. Okay, if you're looking in goal,
Okay, let's say 5% right here. Okay, let's see, go in here, that means in here. Let's see, what they get? Plus minus 5%. Okay, grown 5% tolerant. Hey, Mr. Pham, I, I, think that, I think you're right because in the past I've heard that gold was 5% and silver was 10%. Use one or the other. Okay, so basically on this table here, okay, it's not a the value is here, it's the right one, okay? I have to take that. The thing is we're not using that, okay? So we don't care much. I not pay much attention. And that one. That means they given to you the register, okay, with the value. And they asking you, what the color, okay? So now, the answer will be brown, black, and violet. So I can go in back to this thing here, I make sure I get the correct value for this register value here. Okay, the thing I didn't see any 5%. Okay. If you look at the, if you look at the fourth column here, Mr. Fan, yeah, right there, they're going silver, gold, gold. So they're saying the first one is 10% and the three below are 5%. Yeah, yeah, but the thing I want to correct that. Okay. The thing is, if the people don't know anything, we're looking for the table here. They cannot fire five percent. You see that? Yeah. So I think right. that's wrong. Right. In the in the textbook it's wrong. No. Okay. But we will be. I wrong. would, Mr. Fem, I would say first correct it because most of the students are new. They are getting confused. I'm what I am observing is the beta. We correct it first and then we explain it. So, so that's why that I will, we don't pay attention. That will be best. Because most of the kids are new, most of the students are right now new, I know. and they are getting confused. So okay. let's correct it first and then explain it. So it will be easy right. for the those who are new. Thank right. you. That's what I said. Don't pay attention on this part right now. Okay. The thing I need to correct that before we can move on. Okay. The thing is, you know. Uh, that is the part, I think, uh, I get a table from the textbook. It's uh, wrong somehow. I may not pay attention. So now you can see it. I can go back to that one, okay? Next on Wednesday meeting. Okay, the next thing they're talking about, conducting G85 at a major material ability to allow the flow of chat and a side uh, unit assignment. A lack of conductor indicate that the material is able to conduct current well. Very low value. Conductor indicate that material does not readily permit the flow of the chat, okay? Mathematics, G will be equal to 1 over R. G will be opposite to the register, okay? And R will be in O, and G will be a Simon. So G will be get a good, if they good, get good at conduct current, R will be opposite to the current, okay? If they want uh, conduct of the following five ohm 
you want to calculate y, y will be equal to one over five. If you want to calculate y on a hundred k, they will be one over hundred k. So conductance will be easy to conduct the current. Resistance will be opposite the current. So they will be opposite. Okay, the formula Z will be one over R. Okay, now this is a part that is important to you. We're talking about Ohm law. If you're looking on this circuitry here, you get the battery E, no matter how many volts, 12 volt, 5 volt, and you get a resistor here. So when you connect this way, you get a current flowing from positive E, go to resistor here, and go back to the negative. Okay? So the Ohm law, that means the relation between the voltage the current and the resistor. So E will be equal to I times R. Okay? E will be whatever voltage here apply for. I will be the current, will be in ampere, and R will be resistance in O. E will be a voltage applied in the volt. Okay? And from this formula, you're able to calculate I. I equal A divided to R. Or you can calculate R equal A divided to I. Okay? They given you the example here. Okay, the lamp a draw 25 milliamp. When connect to 6 volt battery, what is resistance? That means on this problem they want to calculate R. They asking for R. R will be equal to E divided to I. Okay? E will be a 6 volt. I 25 milliamp. Then have to be 25, you must be 10 to the M. Okay? 10 to the M. That means 25 will be times 10 minus 3 M. And that's why given you the answer will be 240 ohm. This is a basic Ohm law, okay? You must be trying to memorize. They want E, then I come R. You, they want I, you take E divided to R. And if you want R, then you take E divided to I. However, importantly is the unit. E must be involved. I must be in ampere. I must be in O. If they given you I milli M, then you have to convert it to the M. Okay? I, if they given you kilo O, then you have to convert it to O. Okay? That is for Ohm law. That is they combine the Ohm law to get a power formula. If you got to want to calculate the power, okay, then you can use P equal I square times R, okay? And also you can get a P equal V times I. In this formula, P will be in what? I will be in ampere, R will be in O. Okay, and they can give uh, you another formula here. P equal V square divided to R. So basically, if you want to calculate the power, okay, of the resistance, then you get three formula. Either one, P equal V times I, or P equal I square times R, or P equal V square times R divided to R. So basically, it depends what they give it to you, okay? Okay, so... Uh, Mr. Pham, if I might interject, I, I would say that for, for new students, this is the single most important set of formulas that you need to understand. And if, if you have a little bit of algebra, like high school algebra, 
it's really only one formula that's manipulated by algebra, right? So in the, on the screen that's up here, okay. v, yeah. v, v equals IR, uh, if you divide both sides, if you know algebra, you divide okay. both sides of oh, the equation don't by, don't right? Okay, hold on. Don't, don't try to go into a detail. I want to know that they want to calculate the power they can use in either form formula. I don't care they, how they get I squared times R. I don't want to confuse, okay? Don't try to go in detail. You're talking about the people can understand. That means they get a basic. However, how many people in this program, they're able to understand that, okay? So don't go detail in anything. You can get a certain group of people understand the math, understand a little more than you can go into that, okay? However, for this program, we want to know how to using the formula to calculate what we want. Basically, what technician doing? Technician will be testing. They not design anything, okay? They don't have to do any uh, calculate why, how come you get B equal V time I, or how come they can get V square over R. I know how to do it, but I don't display here. That's just confusing the student, okay? Make sure you understand that. This program different from the college, in the college student, that different. I hope the guy can understand that. Okay, so now I can stop in here, okay? And Mr. Sam will be running the free. That would we try to get your guy to exercise. That's the way the program running online, okay? On the first day, still too many things. We still need uh, to take your guy. I, what I'm saying is I suppose you know nothing about electronics, okay? How many people can understand this thing on the first day? I don't think so, okay? So I stop there and uh, uh, Mr. Sam can run. You can do the right thing on the quiz or you cannot get the right thing, that doesn't matter. We just try to see how much your guy understand. So that's why we can ask you the way we can take in your guy. Okay? Any question? The thing is, the new student, tomorrow, you will be on the Zoom with the lab instructor. He will try to teach your guy how to use the test equipment, okay? And he can go over for the basic arm law, okay? You will be back with me on Wednesday. Okay, Sam. All right, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so everyone, just like I said, to go, make sure you go to the website uh, and then just, uh, let me see, go into the website and then make sure you go to the handouts. And then you wanna get is this report here. Now, if you cannot able to do anything on Excel for today, you can also do it, uh, you can search on your computer, you can write, you can do it like on Notepad, okay? So you have to do it, just put it today. Uh, it's called the report, it's called eQuiz, Summer 2021 report. And you just have to do it just number one to 10 and you just have to do it, type, write the answer here and then just upload this for now, okay? So if you cannot, uh, yeah, if you cannot get access to Excel and you have a problem with Excel, you can do it on Notepad or you can do it on, on Word. Anything that you can do it on, do it and then be able to upload it, okay? Uh, does anybody have any question? No? 
No. Okay, thank you. All right. So we're gonna go through the test. The test is gonna be 10 question. Okay, so we're gonna be, uh, gonna be running the test. Uh, all right. How'd you find my house? Oh, okay. <laughs> I do not know your house, Richard. Give me your address. <laughs> all right, let me go ahead and start. Okay, can you all see? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, do as best as you can, you know, like I said, just do it and just write on a sheet of paper if you can and later on just type it on, on a, another and then just type it on either on notepad or anything on uh, Word or anything like that that you can upload to the website. Um, I have a question for you, Mr. Yee. Yes, Matthew. Um, you know, I'm not in a hurry here to, you know, uh, pass everything i can tell you right now i'm completely lost but, okay but that's good looking, everybody looking, should be lost <laughs> yeah, i'm looking i'm looking at the long view anyways yes um because so what's a good obviously there's some people in the chat that are offering to uh work in study groups through zoom and stuff like that I, i'm probably going to take advantage of it uh you know their their generosity yes but is that's there a good any idea. other um study guide that I could incorporate into these handouts is because yeah. I've, taken, I've taken the HVAC one and two mm -hmm. uh, course and a textbook came with that course. Does this course also have a textbook? Or are we working strictly off the handouts? Uh, mainly you're going to work off strictly from the handout. The instructor will give you the handout and the handout has all the, uh, all the subject, uh, all the topic that you're going to be covered. And then most of the time, you're going to spend a lot of time just Google the information to get okay. further information. Okay. And, and, and Sam, I might, I might add that there, uh, if you go to the main page, there's a, a, a drop down thing or a selection called references. Yes. And there are really, really good references. There are some textbooks. Yes. That cover uh, Mr. This stuff in detail. Thank you, oh, Richard. Yeah, Mr. yeah, Mr. Tai would go over that tomorrow. Okay, and then my last question, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys get back to everything. Um, so at what level of math would this could be considered? So if I say, for instance, utilize those references or even go on YouTube, would this be considered algebra? Yeah, you, uh, it's just a basic algebra and then you just have to do it, just know simple uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. That's just a simple basic, just a simple basic math. We're not gonna go into something very too complicated. Okay, understood. Thank you very much. I would okay. I would also add that a little bit of trigonometry would help too. It helps, but yeah, oh, well, you'll understand awesome. once Thank we you. go through it. Yes. Yeah, logarithm. You will need logarithm. Logarithm. When you when we teach with the power. Yes. So yeah. Will absolutely. Need... When we get into decibels, you need to understand. Logarithm yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a somewhat hard topic. Yeah. Logarithm. So yeah. try to I, refresh your logarithm. I'm just having a little bit of a, a challenge right now. You know, I've I've been in a totally different uh, trade for uh, 28 years, so this is this is a bit of an abrupt change, but I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, everybody. I'm out. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. Sam, uh, why can't we download the questions? Uh, it's up to the instructor. The instructor is in charge. So if he gave me to just run the test, I'm only supposed to run the test. You have to ask the instructor. That will be display on the on the web, but not bring out for the, the quiz. If you want it, you can watch on the web. They will run exactly like we're doing right now. You, you can take the quiz by watching the recorded video, but there's a time limit on your response. And I'm like, what, what is the time limit, Sam? Yeah, this is three minutes uh, per page. No, I mean in turning in your answers. Oh, no, uh, yeah, so that's, you have to turn in uh, by tomorrow by noon time. Noon? So you have, you can work on this through tonight and then all the way in the morning. So it must be uploaded by noon tomorrow. So this, this quiz right now is being recorded. I could go back, redo the quiz on my own and write this down and submit it through Notepad? Yes, Richard, you can do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
But if you submit past the noon deadline, then the best score you best grade you can get is a C, I think. I think Correct. Thank you, right? Richard. Okay. Yes. One other thing, um, how do I get to the recorded class and the quiz? Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're going to show you that in one minute. After we're completing this quiz, we'll show you one more time, OK? OK, okay thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, can you go back to one and two? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait until it goes through all the way through first. If I stop, then we have to go start at the beginning again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just be patient. Just let it go through and just uh, working from here from three. Yeah, just write it on a sheet of paper. And so that way you have at least the equation, how to do the calculations. And um,
Okay, so that's pretty much it. And let me go ahead and go to the. Hey, what about numbers one and two? Yeah, yeah give me one moment. I'm going to go there. Uh, give me a second. I actually just only wrote down the questions. Okay, so we're going to be going to current slide. Okay, there's the number one and number two. <sighs> Thank you. And number four, please. Um, number four, like I said, Mr. Fan will upload the video onto the website and you can watch the video. Okay. So that's number one and two. Hey, Sam, that's did Mr. Fan three and four. Go ahead, Joseph. What? Did Mr. Fan want tech two? Taking these tests? Yes. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Okay, let me go ahead and stop it. Okay, so next thing you want to do is go ahead and get to, to get it to upload. Let me see, end slideshow. Okay, so next thing you want to do, it's once that is done, uh, let me go ahead and go to share screen one more time. Share screen. Okay, so let me see. Uh, sorry, I didn't miss all the chat there. One second, uh, if I can get to that. Okay, all you need for it. Okay, so okay, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna just go into the website. Okay. Like Richard mentioned earlier, you know, if you need some extra, um, if you need some extra materials, you can always go to reference or in references here. Okay, click on references and then it should be, let me see if it comes up. Uh, let me see, okay, reference. And then you wanna do is scroll down to the bottom, uh, it's somewhere in the middle here. Uh, now you can go electronic website, you can go do some of this tutorial, or you can get to the electronic books. So their introduction to electronics and some like conducted devices later on. And then you have some basic video electronic videos that you can watch. Now, Mr. Fan will upload the video onto this website uh, of what we what you just went through. Okay, it will be under the video heading. So you click on the video. And it would list somewhere, it would say, now this one for the spring here. So he would make another one for the summer, for summer 2021. And he would put it, that video, the today video in that summer. And then you have to do it, just watch that video. And then you can watch pretty close to the end where the quiz is given. And then, okay, so you can uh, do that. You can go through that video Thank you. and, okay. So when you're done uh, now, once you have that, quiz done and like I said you can do it like on the um, you can put in like notepad or word or anything just type in the answer just type in the answer and make sure you save it and I upload it later tonight yes like I said it's due by tomorrow by noon time okay <laughs> so between now and till then you can work on it and Mr. Video Mr. Fam will try to upload it as soon as he finished with this and he's going to do a little bit editing and then I will try to get it onto the website as soon as possible okay all right so therefore now you can oh, do he's going to have a summer web page done between now and 12 o'clock noon tomorrow, right? Uh, I do not know. That's Mr. Fan's uh, part. Okay. So when uh, when later on, you can go through, click on <sighs> upload file. This is when you're ready to uh, to to turn in the uh, the quiz that we just took. Okay. So you click on the upload it's... file, and then it will bring you into this page here. And then you have to do it. Just come in here, and you want to do it. Just type in your name for me. I will be Sam. My last name. And then I can go click on, I already saved that file. So I can go click on choose my file. So I want to go find it. And then it's in my, it's in my summer. And it is in, yeah, don't worry about my, um, my folder. I create a lot of folders for it because I use a lot. And it's in this Excel and it is this quiz report right here. And so if I have on the, if I, Put it on my notepad. I will click on this one right here. I click open and then it should display right here and it said dot uh, txt. So this is the one on my notepad. Okay. And once that is shown here, I click a do, click on this green button, upload, and now it goes into my file. And to confirm whether it's there, whether it got turned in or not, I have to do just scroll down to the bottom and then click on this one. And make sure you type in your first name, last name, mm -hmm. click on retrieve. Okay. And that would show my file. Okay. So one that just turned in a minute ago is this one right here, TXT. Okay. So that, that's how you uh, upload the assignment or upload any uh, all the quizzes onto the website. Okay, any question? Did I go too fast? If, 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 if I go too fast, please let me know so I can go through it again. Okay, uh, everybody follow? Yes. Okay, yeah. so make sure it's, go, it's all in this here, upload file. So, and then you come in here, type in your name, your first name, last name, and choose the file that you want to upload to the website. 
And once you have that done, click on upload and it should go into the website. Okay, so this is will be recorded and it will be uh, the video. So therefore, if you need to, if you're not familiar with it, you will, can watch the video and just follow the, the video there and it will show you, okay? Hey Sam, could I add? Yes, John. Yeah, typically he has um, the class recording on his uh, YouTube page within an hour or two after class. Yes, uh, we, we, yeah, look like uh, the video. Like I said, he had to go and set up this page here and make sure and before he can upload the video. Thank you, John. Okay, so any other question? Okay, uh, before you go, look like uh, Quincy Lamar, you said you haven't registered and Jan Leon Morales, you said you have not registered. Go ahead, please. Uh, you can send uh, your information to me. Uh, make sure you enter, uh, make sure you can uh, email me and then make sure you put your student ID number there. So that way I can get you registered for class, okay? So send it to my email and I will make sure that you get registered for class. Okay, is that too small or that? Let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just send it to my email right here. And so I can uh, make sure you uh, get registered for class. So if anybody here that has not registered, so make sure you, you send me an email with your name and with your student ID number, and I wanna make sure you get registered for class, okay? But for everyone else, thank you for coming and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 5 uh, p.m. Thank you. Okay? You're welcome. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. Have a good night. Thank good night, good night everybody. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Fam. Back to you. Good night and thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, good night.